the constitution contemplates that the word commission will be used in multiple senses. The returning officer, when he makes a declaration, is the commission. The officers of the commission, when they procure, let us take procurement, when the procurement process is done by officers of the commission, that is the commission. When the chairman declares the, uh, the, elect, uh, the presidential vote, he is the commission. Now, my lords and my ladies, you are also uh, referred to extensively to the regulations and to the Gazette notice. So let me say this first. This is the first time, my lords and my ladies, that I hear a person being criticized for being too open. The chairman informed the purpose of a gazette notice to inform the, the general public. The chairman informed the general public that he is the returning officer for purposes of the presidential election. He didn't need to do it, yes, but he did it. And he is being criticized for that very act of uh, informing the public that the, 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 of, of this fact. Secondly, he, they are now saying that because of the, uh, the forms being in the public portal, it was possible for those forms to be interfered with in some way. And we'll show that there was no such interference. But the criticism now is, you are too transparent. You are just showing people things. Even your numbers, you are showing them. That is the complaint. And my lords and my ladies, this court has gone to great lengths to say that after Article 10, transparency, transparency is an essential ingredient of governance. So when you, are, when you are being transparent by providing information, how can you be vilified for that? My lords, the chairperson is also criticized for setting out the result path at the National Tallying Center. He is telling the public, this is how we'll carry out the function of tallying and verifying. How can that be a source of criticism? Nobody is saying that there is a, 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 there's a promise you made in the result path that was not followed. And my lords and my ladies, it's a humble submission that the process that was followed at the National Tallying Center, which is, which is set out in the Gazette notice that I do not need to read out to you, was transparent, was verifiable, and was in accordance with the provisions of the Constitution. None of the agents that were involved uh, and that signed the Form 34A has denied that they signed it. Nobody has come to challenge any particular document saying that it is not their document. And an interesting question was asked yesterday. How was a handwritten document to have been changed? The question that we have before you today is whether, as conceptualized, that solution then meets the constitutional imperatives under Article 86 of integrity, verifiability, security, transparency, and accuracy. I will take a moment to just demonstrate how each of these would have been achieved. But when you retire, though, to uh, consider the decision, I would invite your attention to specifically the affidavit of uh, Michael Lohuma, who sets out in a very granular sense how these imperatives were met. I then would want to talk, that is uh, specifically paragraph 39 to 49 of the affidavit of Michael Lohuma. I then would want to talk a bit to the process entailed in those three items. And I'm sure we are mostly, most of us are familiar, those of us who have participated in elections are familiar with that process. That once that, uh, once the uh, voting has been done and the, the polling station has been converted for uh, to the evening now for purposes of uh, telling and counting of results, we start by the counting in a very transparent manner the presiding officers count each and every ballot, and I'm sure we've uh, witnessed this, showing a vote for Gumbo, a vote for so-and-so, and a vote for so-and-so. Now, at the end of that process, they are then tabulated to give us Form 34A. How then is technology infused in Form 34A? Form 34A has internally identified security features. There are eight in number. We have watermarks, we have UV, uh, UV uh, uh, potentials, 
we have microtext amongst other uh, item, uh, security features. What is the significance of this? It is so that when somebody looks at the Form 34A, the original, it cannot then be confused for any other form and that whatever it is that happened at the polling station remains an authentic representation of the will of the people. What then happens is that after that form has been tabulated, it is captured with the KIMS device. One copy is sent to the National Tallying Center. Another of that image is sent to the constituency tallying center. And the presiding officer then uh, 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 collects all the, uh, I mean, takes the form 34A for purposes of uh, uh, the collation to the constituency tallying center. That, again, is to achieve the constitutional imperative of verification. When we get to the constituency tallying center, the returning officer has a back-end access to be able to load their Form 34B uh, and transmit it to the National Tallying Center. Once that is done, they will then go with their Form 34A, together with their Bs, to the National Tallying Center for purposes of... Uh, my name is Mahar Somane Advocate. My name, uh, my name is Mahar Somane Advocate. I'll take you through the numbers as it relates to the petition that has been filed. I will also give you an audit trail of mechanism which the court can use to measure the, the petition. The, question, the first question that I'll answer today uh, relates to the question that has been put to us. And the first one is whether the postponement of gubernatorial elections in Kakamega and Mombasa counties, parliamentary elections in Kitui rural, Kachaliba, Rongai, and Pokot South constituencies, and electoral wards in Nyaki West, in North Imenti, and Kwanjenga in Embakasi resulted in, so, in voter suppression. Uh, the allegation uh, of voter suppression due to postponement of, the, of these uh, elections is not a question of hypothesis. It's a question of fact. It's a question of numbers. What I have done is we have gone through the numbers to give you a comparative data on whether the same is true. Uh, the first one as it relates to Kitui Rural, we have gotten the data for the constituencies in Kitui. Your Ladyship, if you look at the constituencies for Kitui, that voter turnout for Kitui Rural was 60.29%. So for us to actually make a comparative data and an analysis to actually see whether there's been voter suppression, we look at the constituencies nearby and see the data we are getting from the constituencies nearby, whether the, the inference can be made by this court that the, there has been voter suppression. The voter turnout for Kitui Rural is 60.29%. I have highlighted in yellow uh, in your screens. It is comparatively similar to the voter turnout in, uh, in Kitui Central. In fact, it is, uh, Kitui Rural is higher. Kitui Central is 60.10. It's comparative to Muingi Central. So to the question the court asked whether there was voter suppression in Kitui uh, Central constituency because of the postponed election, the answer is an emphatic no. I will go to the second question. The second question the court asks is whether the postponement of elections in Kachaliba and Pokot South re led to uh, a voter suppression that led to a low voter turnout in favor of the petitioner. The answer is data-based. I have provided the comparative analysis. I want the court to look at it. The voter turnout for West Pokot was 81.44. The voter turnout for, Pok uh, West Poko, uh, uh, for Kachaliba was, uh, was 8144 I have highlighted in yellow, the voter turnout for Pokot South is 80.44. It is higher than Kapenguria. It is higher than Sigor. Comparatively, in fact, those voter turnouts were higher than the ones which the election were not proposed. That claim falls flat on the data that were provided to court. I will proceed. I will go to Rongai. The question the court asks is whether the postponed elections in Rongai led to suppression of voter. I have provided the, the data on Rongai. Uh, the voter turnout of Rogai was 61.41 for the presidential. It is, it is higher than in Joro. It is higher uh, than in uh, uh, Naivasha. And it's comparatively similar to the other similar constituencies. To the allegation that there was voter suppression in those places because of the election that was postponed, that allegation is untrue, falls flat on the data we have provided. To the other question, whether 
the, uh, the postponed in, uh, elections in the MCA ward for Nyaki West led to voter suppression. Uh, the, the voter turnout for Nyaki West was 64.32. If you look at North Imenti, it was even lower. It's comparatively similar to the other we have provided. To that allegation, that falls flat on the data and the comparative data we have provided. To the allegation that the MCA ward in Kwanjenga, that, the, that there was voter suppression because of that, the MCA ward in Kwanjenga, the voter turnout was 46.32, comparatively similar to Embakasi South, which is 49.62, comparatively similar to, uh, uh, to Imara Daima and, in, and also in Pipeline. To that allegation, when you look at the comparative data, it's not a matter of hypothesis, it is not borne out by the data. To the allegation that the postponed elections in Kakamega led to voter suppression in, in terms of uh, the petitioners' votes being undercast, the allegation falls flat on the comparative data. We have provided the data for Vihiga, which is similar. Bungoma was a bit higher, but Vihiga is, is the same. So comparatively, when you look at those data points, that allegation falls flat. To the allegation that uh, in Mombasa, the, there was a voter suppression because of the election that was won, I want to point out, even in 2017, the general voter turnout in Mombasa is generally very low. That data is available. It's always lower than the other constituencies. But comparatively, it is almost something that uh, is comparable. To those... So I, I, will ha I have answered, so to the question that the court put out on the comparative data, the answer is there was no voter separation in those places. Senior Counsel Kamau Karori has already explained on the reasons why those uh, elections was not held. It was in, there was nothing premeditated about those elections, uh, uh, not holding those elections. S reasons have been given in the affidavits of the chairman Wifula Chepukati and, and Marjan Hussein Marjan. Chief, Madam Chief Justice, Deputy Chief Justice and Associate Justice of Supreme Court. I wish to respond to uh, three very quick issues that were raised uh, by my learned colleague, uh, Ms. Julie Soweto. The first one relates to a form that was uh, shown this court. I will, uh, I will want the form to be projected. I want to produce to the court the original form 34A. Okay. Yes, you can see. It's okay. You can. I, I want to produce the form 34A, the original form 34A, and I want to inform the court that, that the name Jose Camargo on that form is an overlay. Jose Camargo, the register of the QR code, the register of the QR code that was printed, was printed by Smartmatic International, and it was printed in the name of Jose Camargo. You can show? The, 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 the register is available. We were very patient the way Mr. Mohammed addressed the court earlier. Very, very persuasive. But for good order and not to interfere with his submissions, we kept quiet. And if you look at back at the record, a lot of what Mr. Mahat was saying was actually giving evidence. He was talking using the word we, this is how we do it. The trajectory which he is taking without a witness to tell us the kind of information he's going to give us is going to put the court in a very difficult position. I think he should transform himself to a witness and we begin to cross-examine him. Because, because, and this is very serious, either we practice law the way we understand the law, or anybody can confront the court with any document at any time. I understood Mrs. Soweto to be giving an explanation in response to a question by the court. And similarly, Mr. Mohammed was responding to question by the court and therefore he had some latitude but now we are entering a different universe where he is now going to produce evidence he is saying how the picture was taken there is no certificate and this is electronic evidence accompanied by an original i think it is very very dangerous territory and unless some clarity is given on this matter it is going to be very difficult to operate from now.
us, uh, Senior Council, we've come thus far with a lot of uh, discipline and dignity and the respect to the court. The reason why we are here, and you saw us take a lot of time to reflect on the application that was made uh, by, I think he started with uh, Mr. Katwa, Keegan, uh, Mr. Kirago, and Mr. Ngatia. We resisted until we established from the pleadings that we have that these are new forms. And indeed, they are entitled to respond to them. So please, if you can just respond without taking us into anything else, just respond to those new forms because they were not part of the ones that we have before us. We established that. We, the, the difficulty we were facing uh, in thinking about this, an allegation has been made as it relates to this form. And there's an overlay of someone called Mr. Jose Camargo. What we were trying to show the court that this is an overlay document. And we wanted to actually show the court where this document from Jose Camargo has come from. The document relating to Jose Camargo has come from the QR register, which is distributed to every polling station. And that document is even in the possession of this court. If you look at the scrutiny report, the QR documents are there. So what happened? A PO took an original form 34A. He had the QR register and he took a picture of it. What is the evidence that is being given in this court that someone called Jose Camargo is interfering with this? And the point we want to make to this court is that if you look at the scrutiny report and if you look at the QR register, which is in those boxes, you will actually find the name of Jose Camargo on the register that has been printed. We've also produced the original form 34A. We've come with the receipt. And we're being told that you cannot produce your original 34A, that Jose Camargo was interfered. And in fact, if you look at the numbers on the original 34A, it's the same as what the picture of the overlay was taken. So to the question that someone called Jose Camargo was interfering with the portal, it's actually not true. It's incorrect. And the, and the attempt to prevent that evidence to the court is actually, should actually make the, guide the court that actually that is not true. If, why would anyone try to interfere with a, a portal transmitting and the result he has is the same as what's, what is in the A and what is in the portal? So to that question, we, we submit that that is not true. And that is an overlay that someone who has taken the picture, we will give the, the court the, the form 34A to compare uh, with the original 34A with the certified copy that the court has. And in fact, we direct the court to the scrutiny uh, documents. That register of opening and closing the KIM is there, and the name of Jose Camargo for purposes of audit trail is printed in there. Smartmatic. Jose Camargo is printed there. So what has happened? Someone appealed, took a picture on that one. The next point I want to make is the issue of the Kims. Uh, we've been told there are two Kims kit, uh, which had uh, the same uh, serial number. And we understood our role to this court to give what, all the information to the court to make a decision. We admit that those Kims have the same serial number. It was an error that originated at the time of the, of the serialization. But we want to tell the court that Kims, those Kims have different IMA. They have different uh, IP addresses. They have different polling stations. They have different, so they have very different identifiers. And we acknowledge that. That is an error that originated relating to those two schemes. But there are other identifiers that can identify those schemes are from, from our system. And we want to give that information to the court for purposes. Those schemes are on their way to this court. We will give to the registrar of the court for the court to analyze and to look at it. And if you look at those schemes, they transmitted the, the forms as required in the portal. And the A's also are coming, the original A's, we will also give for those three forms. And our, our role is to give. The issue of transmission has come up. I just want to say this. There were three, uh, 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 three sets of, uh, of transmissions at BOMAS. One on the forms that has been downloaded. That was running properly. The second one related to the constituencies. That was continuing. The, the one which had stopped was the one on the tally. And the reason it stopped was for three days, we had only verified 50 uh, arrows. The process became clogged. For you to be able to transmit to the announcement, verification had to happen, then announcement happens. That means that those arrows have to be stopped because verification cannot happen as announcement is happening. We will be running numbers uh, uh, that have not been announced yet. 
So because of that, and because of the audit, forensic audit that most of the agents were recommending, we had to stop that process to give verification a chance. There was nothing malicious about that. Those few uh, remarks, your ladyship, I stand guided. Um, Mr. Mahat, maybe we can have a look at the, the original lady, the... 34 that you are showing. Sorry. As you continue to look, uh, we'd just like to make an observation. Uh, in fact, we are happy that the court receives the document, particularly the, the Form 34A. And everyone has been quoting Shakespeare and all the rest. I'll just quote some Swahili. Siku yanyani kufa mitiote huteleza. If you notice on the 34A, the UDA agent, the second agent, signed the form on the 7th of August, 2022, before the election, before the election. I repeat, before the election. The other one as well, perhaps might have signed it on the 7th, but it's not clear. So that's all we wish to say. Um, uh, while at it, Council, uh, just before you go back, and when did the other agent sign? It looks like 7th, it looks like 9th. Only, only the IBC and Mr. Chepkati can tell us. It is there. Yeah, before, before they explain, they would have to have something to explain. I, we have let it go in. Um, this form, from the naked eye, of course, um, appears to have been signed by both agents on the same date. And the same date is 07. Oh, is 07 of 08. 07 of 08. Yes, indeed. See, well, I thought the point you were making was that the second one signed before the election. What I, uh, as though the first one, if I could just finish, okay. as though the first one had signed on a different date. Um, no, our point is, and has always been, these forms may have been manufactured elsewhere, before, well after voting, and they all arise one day and they are counted. It is the mess that is IBC, and it is the mess that is the 2022 presidential election that we have been emphasizing. Thank you. The second question I want to answer that the court, uh, the, the court put out uh, to us was whether there are unexplainable discrepancies between the votes cast for the presidential candidates and other elective posts. Indeed, if there was unexplainable discrepancies, is a grave issue, which we know. We will show through the data that we have provided to the court that the same is not true. In fact, we can account for each ballot. Uh, to just guide the court, refer to the affidavit of Moses Ledama Sunkuli, uh, which is on record. Uh, we have provided the comparative analysis. In fact, what I did is we provided the 34C, the, 30, the, uh, the 37C, 38C, and 39C. Those are the forms uh, for the governor, uh, the senator, and the women rep. We turn it against the presidential. I want to refer the, the court to paragraph 36 of Moses Ledama's affidavit for the court to look at it. And if you do a tally, and we, we, we started with a tally for Senate, if you do a tally for the votes that were cast for the Senate, vis-a-vis and that, your ladyship, that runs from page 13 of Ledama's affidavit up to page 15. And I just did the, 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 an, the summary analysis, but there's a very big, uh, big comparative table that I've put out there. If you do the analysis, you will come to the following conclusion. What is the voter difference between the senator and the presidential? 500 votes, the variance. And how do we account for those variants? So when you do the presidential like for like and the senator, you will get a difference of 22,801. You have to minus diaspora voters, which only vote for the presidential. You have to minus prisons, which only vote in the presidential elections. Okay? And then you have to look at stations which were affected and did not have any results for any of those, of, of those uh, elective posts. For example, in some of the stations, some few stations, some violence happened, likely they did not report for Senate. When you do that analysis, you will get the differential is 500 votes. 
I have done an elaborate analysis also on the stray ballots. When we, we get to that, I will explain. So the differential between the Senate and the presidential is 500 votes. And that 500 votes, we can account for in stray ballots. I have attached the polling day diaries for Kibra and Makadara. I have done an analysis to actually check what is the stray ballot per constituency. And this style is like for like. So to the question whether there was a discrepancy between the presidential and the Senate vote, the answer is an emphatic no. It is explainable by looking at what the information that we have provided. To the second question, whether there was a discrepancy between the women, uh, women uh, member of National Assembly for, for, for the women rep as compared to the presidential, I will tell the court to look at uh, page 18, page 17 and 18 of Moses Ledama's affidavit. And our answer is there is no much difference. And the differences can be accounted for. The variance analysis we have provided. <clears throat>